Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Mayflower Congregational United Church of Christ here in Sioux City, Iowa, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We are an open and affirming church that welcomes all into our church just as Christ has welcomed us. A uh, couple things I want to announce at the very beginning. Uh, today from 2 to 5 p.m. will be the visitation uh, for Dorothy Bruce at Christy Smith Carroll Home. And there will be a short prayer service after the visitation. And the memorial service for Dorothy Bruce will be tomorrow here at the sanctuary. And we will continue to keep uh, her family and our thoughts and prayers. We will begin with our passing of the peace. May God's peace be with you. And also with you. Greet your neighbor with a hello, a hand wave, and greet all of those who are joining us online by waving at the camera.
Creator God, even while we give thanks for life and breath and bodies and the goodness of the earth, we are aware of the ways we have betrayed your gifts and caused the brokenness in your precious creation. We have taken your gifts for granted and we confess our carelessness. Remind us then of the responsibilities we bear because of the likeness of your image. Good morning. This is what stewardship means to me. I am the fifth generation at this church. That means a lot to me. My grandmother's maiden name was Pico. Her grandfather and father were involved with the building and upkeep of all the churches that we have been in. When we out through the church on Silver Street, they built the one that we are currently in. It was through stewardship that this was able to happen. My grandmother and her four sisters and brother walked from the church on Silver Street to this one on opening day. There is a picture in the west part of that shows the group. Back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, this church was a neighborhood church, always full on Sundays. It's sad that churches like ours are no longer in the family dynamic. Stewardship is a, is a generous giving of money for upkeep and to pay the bills. It is also the work that is done inside and outside of the church. There are many people who donate their time and talent at no cost. This helps us raise fees we normally would have to pay for outside work. Your generosity is truly appreciated. So is the kindness everyone shares when we have new people that come to see what we are all about. Let's keep up the good work we do. And thank you for your yearly donations. Time that you give 
volunteering for the church. There's talents, whatever special gifts you have, whether it's singing or playing a musical instrument or maybe an art project in Sunday school. And then there's treasures, your financial contributions that you give to the church. And as before, that's three, time, talent, treasure. So those are the three ways that we give, and that's what we want to be talking about for these, these three Sundays. And all three things are important to help the church continue its work. Dear God, we thank you for the gifts that you've given us. Help us to be good stewards so that, no, not that way. your mission can be fulfilled. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've got some treats here. I should have brought my candy. I still have a ton of candy left over from Halloween because I do not have very many trick-or-treaters. I've been slowly eating on it myself. Does Billy want one? What do you say? Thank you. Thank you. Everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, 
I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today we are beginning our annual fall stewardship campaign. The theme this year is because of you, our church changes lives. When we think about stewardship, we tend to think about it in a very limited kind of way as just simply being about the money that we contribute to the church. And don't get me wrong, contributing financially is an important part of stewardship, but it's only one aspect of stewardship. For these three weeks of stewardship, I would like to explore with you three different aspects of stewardship that give it a broader range that we may not, these three aspects we may not often think about when we think about stewardship. So this morning we'll be exploring stewardship as a human vocation. We are all called to be stewards of God's creation. In our scripture reading from Genesis, God entrusts humanity to be stewards of God's good creation. This happens when God creates humanity in the image of God and gives them dominion over all of God's creation. We are to have a special kind of partnership with God, working together to tend to the needs of creation. Dominion and God's charge to subdue the earth has often been misinterpreted as meaning domination. God gave us this plan, therefore we can do whatever we want. That's not what this text is saying. Dominion is not about domination. The charge to subdue the earth is not about domination. It's about imitating the way that God subdues the kind of chaos we hear about at the beginning of chapter 1 in Genesis. This kind of subduing is about taming the chaos so that creation has the potential to flourish and thrive. When God creates in Genesis, it is not depicted as a battle like many of the creation stories that came from their pagan neighbors. The pagan creation stories describe God's creation as arising out of a battle. In contrast to the creation stories of the Israelites' pagan neighbors, our creation story calls us to be in partnership with God, to contribute to the flourishing of creation. The UCC stewardship material that we receive every year especially this year, provided, provides us with some questions to think about when considering this reading from Genesis. And the one that struck me the most was this one. The most important question it asks us to consider is, what are the relationships that we have here at Mayflower Congregational UCC in Sioux City, Iowa, like? Do we have the same kind of relationships that God has had toward us in this reading from Genesis? Do those relationships empower people to thrive and grow into the children of God that they were created to be? I've had many experiences with you where I have seen these kinds of relationships at work in our congregation. The Mayflower free food giveaway that we do every month. When we take time to visit with someone who is in need. Or when we give a member who needs a ride to church, a ride to church that doesn't have transportation. When we give the AA and NA groups a space in our church for doing their work of healing and recovery. The free rubbish, the coach free outside, 
all the work and support that we give to the soup kitchen and the warming shelter, Calico Kids, and I'm sure that there are many more that we could add to this list. If we are honest, though, with ourselves, there are also times when our relationships have not modeled that of God. They have not lived up to that standard. Genesis, in addition to this creation account, also tells us about what things are like when our relationships are not as God intended. One of the things I learned in seminary about Genesis that many of you may know or may not know is that there are two stories in Genesis. The scripture reading that I read from Genesis 1 where God creates everything and calls it good is different from Genesis 2 of the Adam and Eve account. And one of the main differences for me that I caught right away is that in Genesis 1, God creates man and woman at the exact same time, simultaneously. In Genesis 2, God creates Adam first, and then takes the rib from Adam to create Eve. Sometime, when you have some spare time, read, put Genesis 1 and 2 side by side, and check the differences out. But regardless of that, it's the meaning of the accounts and how they relate to stewardship that matter most. Genesis 2 is where we hear about the, Adam, the fall of Adam and Eve from paradise. The fall that they experience is a result of them not modeling the kind of relationship that God has modeled for us to follow. When the serpent convinces Eve not to follow God's command, that trust between God and humans is broken. The desire to do things on our own without God results in the relationship between God and human beings being broken. The Tower of Babel is another example of the breakdown of this relationship. The scarcity mindset that I believe arises out of us comes from us not modeling the kind of relationships that God wants us to. And this is why we have a confession of sin, because we're all still a work in progress. We need worship that models for us what it means to be a good steward. When we can model the same kinds of relationships with one another and creation that God has had with us, then we then that's when we will be good stewards. When we are good stewards, humanity and all of creation is given the ability to grow and flourish. Amen.
come to the table where we give thanks for the unfolding of creation from the very beginning until now. The stuff of stars exists within us each. Bits of atoms and matter brought from God's generative power. God has gifted us generously, and God's abundance sustains us. Sharing a broken bread and a poured cup, we receive God's blessing alongside the call to share that which we have been given. So come to the feast, and having been filled, we pledge ourselves to bear witness to our Creator's loving presence throughout the whole wide world. The spirit of creation is with you. And the spirit of creation walks close to you. Open wide your souls. We are open to the Creator's love. Let us give thanks to the God of earth and rain. We delight with our holy God on this earth and we rejoice forever in what God has created, is creating, and will be created. The spirit of creation built this vast universe, including our beautiful, strong, and fragile planet. The earth held the plants and animals in the Garden of Eden. Later, the earth carried the Israelites on their wilderness journey, and while they danced joyously in the promised land, the earth absorbed the tears of Job, supported the steps of prophesying Elijah, and carried David in the shadow-filled valleys. Jesus taught on mountains and plains, walked throughout the land healing the aching, and prayed in gardens late at night. In times of exile and times of return, the land held the stories of our ancestors in faith. Today we abide on this earth in houses of worship, in homes and in halls. We know this land we share today is sacred. It bears much fruit. It holds the flora of the friendships. And deep within its cells are the stories of ancestors, parents, guardians, and leaders of the faith. We know their footprints are still felt by the earth. And we remember the ones who held this land as their own centuries ago. They were the first to tend the land, to nurture it as a parent would nurture their child. The winds of occupation seared the land and crushed their hearts and lived the lives of its first inhabitants. Through the hydrating tears of our God, the land remembered its strength from its ancestors. In our spaces today, we remember their place on the land and their care for creation. From the strength of those who have gone before comes the seeds for grains and grapes. The land has given birth to the fruits of our sacraments. With glory to our God, we praise the spirit of creation. Holy, holy, holy spirit of earth, air, fire, and water, heaven and earth delights in your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who brings love and life to our world. Hosanna to our God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> On the night before Jesus walked the ground carrying the tree to Galgapa, he gathered with faithful friends. From the grain and the ground came the bread that Jesus took and broke in his hand. He blessed the bread and said to his friends, This is my body broken for you. When you eat this bread, remember me. And then after supper, Jesus took a cup filled with the fruit of the vine. knowing they were all connected like the vine and branches. Jesus said to them, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. As you drink from the cup, 
remember me. Spirit of God, just as you hovered over creation and renewed your church at Pentecost, surround these elements. Encircle us, energize our souls, and connect us with each living being here on earth. Just as you have delighted in humans since creation, may your presence create joy in our spirits, transforming us into new beings. Bless the soil that birthed the grains and grapes that we share today. May these elements be transformed into a meal that connects us all. Like the lion and ox, like the lamb and wolf, we eat together, whether near or far, whether well or ill, whether marginalized or privileged. May this meal be one in which we embrace the power we have and strengthen the world with justice and peace, kindness and love. Amen. Amen. Now myself and a deacon will come forward to serve the elements, and you're free. To, you're free to come uh, as you are able to do so. The table is ready. Let all come. Let us pray. Holy God, divine desire, 
with gentle compassion to unite us as vine and branches. Whether near or far, for your meal we share our gratitude. With thanksgiving we voice our joy for our siblings in faith who share the table with Christ and with us. Our souls are rejuvenated with your holy refreshment. Send us into the world today with joy in our hearts and excited to proclaim your radical love in this world. Amen. Now is the time where we will share our joys and concerns. If you have a joy or concern, go ahead and raise your hand. The hand's got the microphone. As I said at the beginning, of Dorothy Bruce um, presentation will be from 2 to 5, and her memorial service will be tomorrow evening. Go ahead, Brian. I want to thank everyone here for the prayer of this last week, uh, the double funeral, and uh, it was a pretty sad day. A huge, huge crowd, large family. So, thank you all. It's our pleasure. Continue to be in our prayers. I'd like to ask Taylor and Church to come to the background. She left me. Okay. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for my aunt who's in hospice and not doing her well. Lord, hear our prayers. <coughs> Go ahead, Mom. <laughs> Our global ministry asked us to pray for the it's a community organization in Brazil. It's the Association of Community Health Educators. And they work among the poor urban people there in the favela. And those are people who lack basic essentials like food, housing, education, and med medical care. There's a woman named Myla Rodriguez who is a 21-year-old woman who was unable to enroll in, a, in the university by the grace of God and the help from this association. And she has gotten into the Federal University in Rio de Janeiro. She said she's the first person in her family to enter a public university. And so we can say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Uh, okay. I just want to take the time to thank everybody for the participation in my grandmother's services. Love each member. Last Sunday, the Sunday school kids made um, Halloween treat bags for the soup kitchen, yes. and then Aaron and uh, CJ delivered them and had a tour of the soup kitchen. So it was good work and good way done. Thanks be to God. I have um, two things. First, um, Rosie messaged me this morning and said she wasn't going to be here because she has a bad sinus infection and asked us to pray for her that she would be healed from that. And I'd also like to ask for prayers for my daughter Melanie and husband Ben. Um, at this they were both indoctrinated. Um, she was told, you either, if you stay here, you're basically on house arrest. You can't America is just water. And so um, they were supposed to go to Hawaii for a conference. Um, Melanie ended up going to Hawaii because um, if they did do a mandatory evacuation, um, she'd be left behind. 
And so um, she's, she's in Hawaii. Ben is still in Bahrain. Actually, he's in Diego Garcia right now, which I had to figure out where it was. It's off the southern coast of India somewhere. Um, doesn't know how long he's going to be there or what they're going to have him do, but they have no idea when they're ever going to get back together again. So just prayers for the two of them. She did manage to find a small studio place to rent, which was actually right across the street from where they lived for three years. So that's kind of funny. Lord, we are in our prayers. I have a combination of Thanksgiving and petition. The last time I get sentenced to fall, right now it looks like things are going to turn out much better than we were expecting. That's the Thanksgiving part. The petition part is that the healing that she has experienced recently will continue to be. Thanks be to God and Lord hear our prayers. Um, do prayers, uh, keep in prayer, everybody around the world who's still experiencing conflict and violence in Israel and Palestine and all of the victims from the deadly main shooting. Lord, hear our prayers. Okay, if there's no others, let us go to God in prayer with a few moments of silent prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, as we walk through this time of stewardship, may you always remind us of what it is to be a good steward and our care for creation and for one another is important. Help us embody the relationships that you have, the kind of relationship that you have shown towards us so that we can be good stewards. Lord, we lift up to you this day all of our prayer requests and all of our joys. We pray that your healing presence be with all who are hurting and your peace, your peace that passes all understanding, be with all who are grieving. We lift all of these things up to you in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray by boldly saying, in whatever words are comfortable for you, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
That's what gratitude and generosity are all about. This wonderful dance between God's blessing and God's dependence on us to bless others and to bless the earth. Today we give thanks for these things and for each other to make this mission and ministry possible simply because we do not do it alone, but together in beloved community. Let us begin this morning's offering. Oh, 
Oh, that's what the Dad's got a bag. I can talk about that. But yes. Um, so we raised um fifty eight dollars and fifty one cents for the trick or treat to be us up last week. It was a great um job by the kids there. Wonderful. Sounds nice. Any other announcements? Okay, then uh, would you please stand, if you're comfortable doing so, for our shindig song, All Things Bright and Beautiful. sends us out to be channels of love, hope, and justice. Go then to bring the gifts of such blessings to all the earth. Amen. Thank you. 